Hi, my name is Pat Pirelli, and one of the coolest things I ever saw in my life was this unbelievably natural horseman named Ronnie Willis. He was riding out in this 100-acre field on a horse, and he had a stick in his hand. And on that stick, he had a piece of, of uh, plastic or something on that it was waving around. And there was this little yearling out there that somebody had called him, and the yearling had got, a, you know, it was real hard to catch, and the halter had grown into its head. And they found that he was the only guy that could get that little horse caught. And here he was riding around out there on his horse and shaking that stick at that horse and had that bag that made a certain noise. And pretty soon that little foal come trotting up to the barn. And when he got up to the barn, they shut the gates around him and up to the corral. And Ronnie rode around. Every time that colt wouldn't look at him, he'd shake that bag at him. Man, and I mean, within 20 minutes, he had this little foal, and he got off his horse. The little foal was walking up to him and sniffing him, and one thing led to another, and he, he petted him and walked off and let him go. I'm thinking, well, you're going to get the halter off. Oh, no, not Ronnie. He did it again. He did it again. Pretty soon it didn't matter. He put his hands all over that foal, that yearling. He took that. It had been that halter had been on him since he was a foal. And he, pretty quick there, he took the halter off. There you go, ma'am. She goes, aren't you going to put another halter back on? He goes, oh, no, ma'am. He says, you'll get in worse trouble with that halter on. Because as soon as that halter was on, people start turning that predator. They start sneaking up to that, foal, that, that yearling. They've been doing it to him since he was a foal. So he says, but if you can come up and scratch him on the withers, you can probably get the halter back on him. And if you can get it on him, you can probably get it back off him. But you've got to go to these withers. My grandma told me that if you can put salt on a buddy's tail, you can catch him. I tell that to all my instructors because they have to take my colt starting course. And, and so many people, they, they get that, want to put that halter on. So anyway, so when we were gathering stuff up and we were going back and I was really amazed. I went and looked at this stick he had and this stick was made out of some kind of metal and I thought, what is it? So finally I asked him, I said, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Willis, what's that made of? He said, well, it's made out of some kind of an antenna. And on the bottom was a piece of, you know, elk bone or something like that, or elk horn and had all this stuff. And, and uh, I thought, wow, that's cool. I went and found me an antenna, and I found me something cool to put on the end of my thing. You know, and about 150 bucks later, I had me this cool stick. Well, pretty soon I'm one of them guys running around the country with one of these cool sticks. <laughs> then I go change countries, and I go to Australia. When I go to Australia, carrying a stick with <laughs> on it wasn't the easiest thing in the world to do, so I... I'll find something when I get over. So I am now find myself in a place called Julia Creek. Look it up on the map. Google it right now. It is smack dab in the middle of the outback. And I'm at these uh, folks named the Dailies, Noel and Dallas Daly. And there's this beautiful station, and we're going to have this clinic and stuff like that. So I said, I need me a stick to go ch -ch -ch with me. So I went walk. I said, do you mind if I look around the barn here? And so they said, sure. So I went around and I found these four foot, this four foot blue, kind of angel blue piece of fiberglass. And it had a little curly cue on it on the end of it. And I went, what the heck is, well, I found out it was a little, and it was sharp at one end. It was a little um, electric fence post. Hmm, so I got, hmm, took something and I went over and found me something really cool, like a sponge and some 100 mile an hour tape or duct tape as some people call it, and taped it on there. They had a shop, I drilled a hole through the end and I took some of this really high-tech baling wire and I made a little loop on the end. And then I went and I found some, you know, they've got, they go grocery shopping once a month whether they need to or not. And I found me some of those plastic grocery bags and then I took that grocery bag and I run it through <clears throat> the ends of that, that stick with the baling wire on it. And pretty soon, man, I had me one of those cool little ch -ch 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 sticks. And there I was, man, in the middle of Australia, the middle of the outback. Julia Creek, halfway to Catherine. And I got a stick. And I could shake it at them horses. And them horses would startle and they'd look at me. And then we'd get them in the trailer and we'd do all this stuff. Well, I was out there for about a month in Australia, traveling around doing different things. I asked them folks if I could take my little blue stick with me. And they said, oh yeah, no, no worries. You can have it, no charge. 
I get home and I think, I gotta find me some of them fiberglass poles. So I go down to the feed store, sure enough, they've got electric fiberglass poles for fiber for electric fences. And I go there and they, you know, they had some, I don't know, yellow ones, I think, or different things. And I, I thought, I wonder, I did a little research and I, if I could find out who makes these things. So I find out who makes these little poles, little sticks. And the guy says, oh yeah, we can make them different lengths, different diameters, all whatever, you, know, what, you tell me what you need. I told him what I needed and he goes, oh yeah, we can do that. He says, but you have to buy them in a minimum of 10,000 quantity. So I had to buy 10,000 of these orange fiberglass poles to start my first one. Now the reason I started with orange was because my very first seminar, 1982, was I came out and I said, you know what? Horsemanship can be obtained naturally through communication, understanding, and psychology versus mechanics, fear, and intimidation. But you have to be in the extreme middle of the roadist in order to do this. In other words, there's a lot of carrot people here I know, and the other half of the people here are the stick people. You know, you know give me that stick and I'll get the horse in the trailer. And, no, 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 give me time and carrots and you go to the house and have a beer and watch television and I'll get them in the trailer. And you both think you're wrong. You're right. You're both wrong. So that's why I got the orange stick, is to teach people to be carrot stick people, extreme middle of the rotus. That was the significance of it. Well, now I needed me a cool handle, and I needed one that I mean we could duplicate anyway. So <clears throat> I found a golf club, and I go, that's a pretty good handle right there. So I asked my dad, who's a golfer, I said, where could I get a handle like on your golf clubs? He goes, I know just the place. I know a wholesale, believe it or not, a wholesale golf club or golf supplies, I guess, dealer. So we went down to Hayward, California, and we went to the thing, and sure enough, this guy sold these things from Golf Pride and made these um, things, and he says, well, you know, we only sell these to, you know, wholesale to, you know, in big quantities and stuff like that. I said, how many do I have to buy? He says, you have to buy 5,000 of these handles in order to take one order. So now I'm really in business. I got 5,000 handles and 10,000 sticks. I thought, well, I'm halfway there. All I could afford. Then I had to figure out how am I going to, this little bale, drill a hole through and put the baling wire on there ain't going to work too good. So I think through by hook and crook, we finally figured out how to make the coolest little stick in the world out of these orange fiberglass poles. So we call it the carrot stick and something that I started selling as soon as my clinics got popular. And then I started to realize that the real value is in the fact that it's not a whip. The real value is in the fact that the stick is stiff. And what I had been using before, mine wasn't so cool, is I took an old buggy whip and I'd cut the ends off and I took some old horse show ribbons and taped them on there and stuff like that and done some different things. But you know, if you watch horses interact with each other, <clears throat> and when they kick at each other, or they do anything, or they paw at each other, or they use their neck, their neck is about four foot long, so are their limbs. And this is what, all of a sudden, I started realizing, this is what's helps, helping this tall-bodied cowboy become a long-bodied cowboy. I'm way out here. Now all I got to do is have an extension of my arm. And I've got one that's not a whip. I've got one that I can reach out and caress a horse with. I've got one I can reach out and defend my space with and ask him not to come in forward. I've got one that I can use with a little bit of pressure. I've got one I can use with the bag or without the bag. Then all of a sudden, I realized I could extend my reach and all my students' reach by taking a six-foot string, which we now call the savvy string, put on the end of that, and now I can have with my 12-foot training rope, and I've got that, I've got a way to be able to reach out different distances. I can have that string right here, I can stay in here close, I can stay in here medium, I can even reach out there from a longer, longer distance away. All of a sudden, my mentor, Mr. Ronnie Willis, he sees me with this orange stick. And he's got the same curiosity on his face when he sees my first horn stick than when I saw his first cool ch -ch -ch stick. And 
was pretty cool. And after we examined it, I gave him one. And for years, Ronnie said to me, he says, you know, that is the most versatile stick I have ever seen in the world. And I just love things that are durable, versatile, last a long time, that'll um, really give us results. And so then in the end, I found out that a whip is often mistimed, misused, and a whip is a refinement tool. But as we're learning to become horsemen and, and learning to, to, to be able to modify our horse's behavior and learning about behavior shaping techniques and modifying techniques, straight from the horse's mouth, if you're a real horseman, then you're a carrot stick person, an extreme middle of the roadist. This is how I help humans just like you keep it natural with their horses.